Oh no! I reckon that's a shark. Let's see how close we can get. Hey, morning mate. These are some of the biggest black lip oysters I've ever seen in my life. Jeez, that's tasty. Oh, 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 God. Oh, oh God. Oh. Woo! Right, so far, it's been 13 days that I've been out here, currently by myself, traveling up a really, really remote part of Northeastern Australia. I'm hundreds, hundreds of miles from the nearest postcode. And so far I'm absolutely loving it. I was pretty sort of anxious, nervous, mitigating risk to the highest degree in the first few days, but I've really settled into it. But the wind has blown up incredibly strong. Uh, so I've seeked refuge in this little protected bay, as you can see behind me. Got a decent anchorage on the sand. Looks like there's a creek just to the north of me. There's a little bit of a sandy strip, not much in the way of a camp, but I'm gonna do up a camp soon. I don't know how long I'm gonna be here for. I'd say at least a day or two. It's all really weather dependent, but I'm largely, well I am, I'm living off the land. I got very minimal in the way of condiments, rice, flour, oil. Oh, and I got honey. That's a morale booster. But uh, yeah, I am I thought today what I'd do is not only of a check of the area, but use a variety of different hunting tools to try and get lunch and dinner and see what the most effective is in this environment. Anything from a, a hand spear, woomera, fishing rod, cast net, axe, screwdriver, hessian sack, you name it, like whatever I've got in my boat to be able to catch myself a feed, I'm gonna put to the test in this environment. So first things first, let's have a bit of a scout of the beach, see what we're working with. The day will largely revolve around the tides. It's a high tide now. And then this creek down here, I really wanna fish on the run out, but a lot to do, a lot to explore. I'm gonna take you for the journey, the highs, the lows. This is the blue highway. I don't know how many episodes we're in, but I'm day 13 and there's a hell of a lot more to go. Let's do it. I think the bed right here in the shade. So what I'm thinking is a really big fire there between me and the crocs and here under the shade is where to set the swag up. Finished product, five stars. And if you're not familiar, this is called a swag. All right, it rolls up, it's made of canvas. Uh, and you get a pretty good sleep in it. Well, I get a really good sleep in it. I'm looking forward to actually sleeping on the land as well, not on a moving, rocking boat, because I'm really happy with that anchorage, but normally I'd never be leaving the boat. But I'm happy with that. Room with a view. See these holes here? They're from wild pigs. They come down out of the scrub generally on low tide and they dig up on the beach and unfortunately if they get to any turtle nests they will destroy 100% of the eggs and they quite often eat up and dig the, the ghost crabs as well so I do have a bow with some arrows in the boat so if I do see some pigs I'll try and get one. Let's say this little pool here all drains out at low tide. What have we got here? Yeah it's a pig, it's not that fresh. And sure enough straight out of this pool that's I don't know maybe a meter and a half or just under two meter crop and this here that's a big print i'd say that's a wild cow there'd be wild cattle all through this scrub here and that there is what cow shit looks like which is great fertilizer but also a telltale sign that <laughs> they're obviously here so i'd be pretty keen to see a wild cow that's only a couple of days old all right so the first tool the cast net i really didn't expect to get much but it was optimal for high tide because there was a lot of bait moving along right against the beach there was probably a hundred gar fish. That's a snub nose gar. So hopefully I can keep a couple alive and I'm gonna eat a few for breakfast because not only are they amazing bait, particularly for Spanish mackerel. All right, so I've got these three gars for lunch. Uh, all I'm gonna do is grab yourself a knife, take the head off just in front of the wing at the front. Just take the heads off them all. I haven't done this since I was, geez, probably haven't eaten gar fish for 10 years. I used to catch them off the beach at home when we were younger. So yeah, just take the heads off and cut from the backside up all the way to the top. And then you want to clean the inside of the guts out. They just feed on like seagrass and seaweed. They're really clean, very easy to clean out. I went down to the beach, I took the guts out and just with my fingernail, or back of your finger, you just get all the scales off. And then you just need a cup and you hold them upside down, grab the cup or a rolling pin and you just butterfly them out like that. And that crushes a lot of the pin bones along the backbone. That there, 
just dust a little bit of flour over it, throw it in your pan with a bit of oil. You can pull that backbone out if you want. And that there's a garfish lollipop. So these are the hunting tools I got. Jesus, sand's hot. I got a fishing rod with a couple of lures, a woomera, a hand line, a hand spear, which the woomera propels, crab pot, cast net, and I've also got uh, a trusty little hatchet, a little ax. So they're the tools that I've got to hunt and gather food in this ecosystem. Let's see what the most effective is, eh? So that tide's dropped out about a meter. I'm gonna grab the rod, reel, and this crab pot and take a walk down here, see if I can access this creek. Some advice I was given from a friend who's a professional crabber told me that there's a high likelihood or a higher chance of a croc smashing your crab pot around a full moon and if you've got a really big bait. So I've just got two of these garfish that I didn't eat that we got from the cast net this morning. So it was about a 500 meter walk along the beach down this little mouth of a creek. But like I said, it's probably dropped about a meter and it's got got probably another meter more to drop and that's when the fishing will really get good around sunset but I'll just come and have a, a bit of a recce to see what it's like and find somewhere good to set this pot for the afternoon and maybe night I think I'll have to try and get upstream though because it looks really sandy around the mouth and I want to find a bit more muddier country but anyway let's have a couple of casts and see if anything's going around this this little bend there's definitely activity there's bait here All right. All right, so I'll come up the river about you know, 200 meters. I'm just gonna throw this pot here for the run out and then I'll get it on sunset and see how we go. Go you good thing. No luck on the fish. I can see a lot of bait, but no bigger predatory desirable tasty treats so uh, i think because the tide's still up a bit yeah there's still a fair bit of water in the mangroves i'd say all the jacks and the barras and the finger mark are still in the root system so i can't get near with the lure so i'm gonna wait i'll wait another couple of hours wait till the tide drops and hopefully they come out of the mangroves real hungry back to camp that is a big big mud crab nipper oh stinks that's a good sign for the last hour and a half i've literally been lying in the shade trying to avoid melting into the sand but i'm up and we're into it and by we i mean me and you because out here it's just me but you're kind of with me <laughs> i'm going crazy two weeks in crazy all right so i got cast net the hand line and the rod and reel with a few lures i'm heading back down to the mouth of this river we've got an hour and a half i reckon to really put the time in put the pressure on and get a good feed. Hour and a half left of run out. Absolute prime time to get a fish at the mouth of this creek. Let's do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh, oh. Just cast it up in the back of those mangroves. Oh. oh. Get out of the snags. That's dinner. Oh my God, that's a good fish. I better get this up on the sand. Oh my god. Look at that barra. It's like an 80, 85 centimeter barra. Oh wow. It's such a spectacular fish. There it is. A big wild saltwater barramundi. One of the best sports fish and table fish in the world. Got like fifth cast here in this creek. This is literally one of the reasons why we come to remote areas in Australia is to catch fish like that. And I bet this system just has so, so, so many more fish like that. This is actually just such an impressive fish. I think I'm gonna let it go. I think that's the right thing to do. Just such a big, beautiful fish. First barra on this trip. Oh, it was just ready to go straight away. I really hope I don't regret that and I can get another fish. If I get another barra, I'm keeping it, but that just felt right. That was a special moment. Oh! Woo! 
really hard to put into words how um, how great that feels. Eh? I'm not really into sports fishing, catching and releasing. I've probably said it a few times before, but I grew up commercial fishing background. So you go out, if you catch something, you hunt something, you kill something, it's 100% to eat. But I've only recently got into an appreciation for catching on lure, the likes of a GT or a Barramundi. And letting a fish like that go is, is special so that it can grow bigger and hopefully someone else can have the enjoyment of catching it or seeing it. I've done it once, I've caught one, let one go. Let's try and get another one. Fortunately, my belly's half full of garfish, so let's hope I can get another one. <laughs> Second cast, two for two bazers. Fair bit smaller. Woo! All right, mate, all right, we'll get you back in the water. This is another barra, but that's probably 53 centimeters, I reckon. They gotta be 58 to be legal size, so hopefully, well, seems like, oh, seems like we'll get more. All right, you go, you go, you go, mate. Oh my God, it's one of the funnest things you can do with your pants on. That's the best, catch a wild barra, wild saltwater barra. <laughs> They're just getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so many little barra here, but literally there was like six fighting over the lure just there, but I need to try and get deep, deep up into those mangroves up in there to try and get the bigger ones. All right, this is now called the Barramundi Bend. Anything following it? Oh, I threw it. Oh, 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 oh. On again. On again, another fish. Oh my God. I don't know how many barra that is. I hope you're keeping count. I think maybe five or six. We need to get a bigger fish. So what I reckon's happening is that as this tide drops in this small system, the water's all draining out to the mouth of this little bend and all the larger predatory fish that have moved out of the big snags and the mangroves that are now out of the water, they're sitting here at the mouth, like literally in this 10 meter wide space. And they're waiting for the bait to just swim on down, get flushed out of this creek and then attack them here. Yeah, nice. Nice. Oh, there's a heap of There are a heap of jacks. Oh no! Oh. Bugger. There was a heap of mangrove jacks. I <laughs> hooked the smallest one, but oh well, it released itself. Let's try to get one of the big ones. Oh my god! How was the air on that? <laughs> it jumped like two meters. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I hope that captured it. It got like a couple of meters of air. Yes, that's dinner. That is absolutely perfect. Come on. You got another run, don't you? Easy. Oh! Come on. Oh, 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 Yes! 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 Oh. That one's a dinner. That's a great barra. Oi, come here. About 60 centimeters. Nice. What have we got here? <laughs> oh, the barra bend. Come on. How many barramundis is that? That would have to be at least 10 bazers at the barra bend. Real life wow. I've actually stopped filming catching barra and I'm still just catching barra one after the other. So yeah, I, I don't know, that's maybe 12. 12 bazers? What is that? I don't think it's a barra. What are you? Oh, golf shot. Nice. Little estuary cod. Oh, look what it's just throwing up out of its mouth. That's a crab. Like a decent sized crab. Well, wrecked. All right, mate, we'll get you in the water. These are really good eating, but it's a bit small. All right, I'm going to start getting a really good coal base going. Got dinner. I'm going to hang that in a tree. And for an afternoon snack, I'm going to go out and see if I can forage a few oysters. So I'll grab the axe and the screwdriver. Go see if we can find a feed of that. I'm just going to leave this. Leave dinner hanging in the tree, I'd say all these green ants are gonna cover it, but that's all right. I'm just gonna leave that there in the cool breeze. Head out and have a look at these rocks on low tide. Generally on the, in little protected bays, ones that are protected from the, the trade wind, you'll get, yeah, big black lip oysters. So fingers crossed there's some on these rocks here at low tide. 
Have a go at that. These are some of the biggest black lip oysters I've ever seen in my life. Right, look at the size of that thing. It's almost as big as my hand. Look at that. There's big clumps of oysters, one after the other. All right, I'm having a feed. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> look at the size of that. I hope you get an appreciation for just how big that is. First oyster in two weeks. Jeez, that's tasty. I'm gonna have a couple more of them. So if you do find yourself your own oyster patch, what I'm doing is I'm just going to the back where the hinge is, and then I'm just hammering on the back of this screwdriver and then just levering it up. Seems to work really well. And keep in mind that there is just about razor sharp. So just be careful and cut yourself up. Bloody easy to do. There's just a series of these rocks all the way along in the corner of this bay that are just covered, covered, covered in, in big oysters. So great to see. A bit of oyster etiquette. If you do happen to come to an area that is full of really big, beautiful, tasty oysters, don't be the person to just go and clean them all up and eat them all. Just take a feed. I had five oysters and there's literally hundreds and hundreds. There might be thousands here because all those rocks over there, about 150 meters away, they'd all be covered, I can see. I can see a heap of them covered in oysters, but yeah, just leave some. Let them, let them reproduce. Save some for the next time you come back to have a feed. But yeah, just don't, don't clean them out. I've seen it happen before, and yeah, they really, really struggle to come back. So <laughs> oyster etiquette. <laughs> All right, I need to go get some water. There it is, catch of the day. Gorgeous wild saltwater barramundi. Fish really does mean a lot to me, eh? Like I said before, it's hard to put into words. Catching these fish in the places that it takes you, like up honestly into one of the most remotest parts of Australia, the remotest parts of the world, just so untouched, completely on the fringes. Croc slides, wild cows, pig tracks, oysters out the front, dozens and dozens of one of the most sought after fish in the entire world especially wild. I've got behind me here probably what would take out coal base of the year. It's been going for about three hours. Really good hardwood timber from along the, along the beach here. I'm just going to pull some coals to the side, get a nice coal base and just let this slow cook straight on the heat. Barra fortunately have really thick scales which lend itself perfectly to, to cooking on the coals. I keep hearing like crackling and rustling in the bushes about a hundred meters behind me in the mangroves and the scrub here. I'm downwind. I've got a feeling there's gonna be pigs along the beach either late this afternoon or tonight. So I'll keep an eye out. I'm gonna flip that barra before long, have a feed of barra and then go back down to that spot and try and get a few jacks or barras right on sunset because we're about, about to lose light in about half an hour. So I'm gonna have a quick feed and then get back down there because I'm pretty keen to make some fish jerky. If you haven't seen the other episodes, any big fish I've been getting, I've been dehydrating naturally in the sun and the breeze on the roof of the boat and making jerky after about sort of 12 to 20 hours which is really tasty and really getting me out of trouble when I haven't been able to get a feed of fish. Oh, oh my God. That's just cooked to perfection. Oh my God, I wish everyone in the world could taste this right now. Look how moist and fatty that is. Great use of the word moist there, just quite. Have a look at all that yellow fat through the top. Such a healthy fish. That there is incredibly rewarding. I'm literally just gonna graze on that for the next couple of hours. Every time I come back to camp, I'm just gonna leave it on low heat and just come back, come back to it, keep coming back to it and keep having a feed. I really hope if you like seafood, if you like fish, you really get to try a fresh, wild saltwater barrow one day. Let's go back down there, go for a fish. The tide has turned, so it's starting to push water all over from these flats here that we're surrounded by in this little bay. Shallow flats, like muddy, sandy flats up into this system. So, oh, also we'll check this crab pot, see if we've got any, any crabs to keep live. Um, I will say though that after 13 days out here um, by myself, definitely been like a few lonely points and like down points and anxious points, but very, very few and far between. For the most part, it's been like quite surreal. Definitely feels like I've been out here for for three weeks or longer. You know, I have these really quite deep feelings of calm, which is nice. It's great to be away 
from clutter and uh, like man-made noise and traffic and particularly devices like beeping devices that are demanding your attention emails calls texts ding 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 all the rest of it yeah helps you breathe a bit deeper the longest i'd ever had completely alone was probably two days before like going on an overnighter or a two-nighter on an island by myself but this extended period of time really is a, a unique trip a unique experience and i really would highly recommend it to anyone who is intrigued and wants to give it a go i just would say though that because there's obviously a lot of risk spiders snakes scorpions sharks crocodiles tripping over and hurt yourself storms not anchoring the boat properly falling over the boat there's just the list goes on so triple checking everything and, and making the right decisions fingers crossed in four days time have nikki joining me miss nikki so that'd be great to have her on board for a few days anyway let's get down to this spot Pretty amazing what two hours difference can make. There's a little bit of bait moving for this, through this creek, but I literally couldn't do a cast there before in an hour period of time without getting a barra hooked up. Let's go check this crab pot now. Before it gets dark, I don't want to be in the mangroves in the dark. What's happened here? Absolutely nothing. Oh, bugger. See what it's hard going getting a crab. Had a bit of success this trip, but it's only been with the hand spear or grabbing them. Ugh. Nothing with the pot. I don't even know if I want to uh, bugger it. I'll put it in tonight. We'll get it in the morning. <sighs> All I've got to report there is that I hooked a shark and it took all my rigging but I'm gonna head back to camp now eat more barra and then in about half an hour's time once the night sets in we'll go see how many crocs we can find all right let's go see if we can find any crocodilians I just got a head torch on we'll go right up the beach just scanning for red eyes Swags here, mangroves are over there, fire's there, hopefully crocs stay on that side of the fire, that's their side, plenty of room, and this can be my side. That is actually going to have coal base of the year. I went for a walk up and down the beach, didn't see any crocs, but I've gone and got as much wood as I can for the fire loaded it up as i'm under the belief that you've got a really big fire a lot of light front of your camp the crocs will be a bit nervous and they'll stay away so that's what i'm going off i hope that's the case didn't see any crocs but i i know they're here there's plenty of slides and it's just perfect perfect croc country yeah i'm gonna try to get a sleep i'll see you in the morning i'm gonna fish that spot again hey good morning i hope you had a slightly better sleep than me it's 5 30 pretty much Drenched in sweat all night because it was that hot. Fortunately, none of the mosquitoes that I could just hear all night didn't get me. And regardless, life's good. It's a clear day, it's a low tide. Let's try to get a fish. There's two crocs at the mouth of the creek and they noticed me before I noticed them. One's gone under the water, which was a lot bigger. Like I left my hand line along alone for like two minutes and something's grabbed it and taken it into the water. See my hand line there? Might still be on. Oh yeah, oh no, bit me off. One hand line, I don't wanna go into croc water. <laughs> don't leave your hand line, eh? Oh no, why? Why are these fish so hard to get on a hand line? I reckon that's a shark. Bugger, two for two. There's so much bait in here. A lot of really big mullets. <laughs> yeah, we're on. Can't really wind and film, but looks like a barra. Fortunately, I just got so much sand behind me, I can just keep walking. There's that tide. 
tides rushing in. There's that croc, probably only six foot long, cruising out the mouth. Let's see how close we can get. Hey, morning, mate. Just hanging, waiting for the tide. That's the difference 45 minutes of incoming tide can make. How insane is that? So much water moving. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll go down and try and get a feed of fish later or pull some flour out, make a bit of a damper on the fire. But looks like this wind is still up, so I'm gonna be here for the next day or two at least. I'm gonna do a bit of boat maintenance, gear maintenance, charge all the cameras up. But yeah, appreciate you watching the video, getting back to basics. Most importantly to us is that you get out there yourself, whatever that looks like. And if you wanna jump on the website, we got merch and kit and lures and really good dry bags and lots of stuff, b2badventures.com.au.